In Revit, you'll encounter four types of parameters. The four types of parameters that you'll encounter are called system, project, family, and shared parameters. Let's start off with the system parameter. The system parameter has three key characteristics. They cannot be created nor deleted. They can appear in schedules and they can be tagged. So the first characteristic is very key. They cannot be created nor deleted. So this means you have a level of consistency when dealing with system parameters. Let's take a look at some of these in more detail. I'm going to select this chair here. And if I look over at the properties palette, I'll notice that there are several system parameters right under my nose. Phase demolished, phase created, mark, and comments. If I go and select edit type, there are other types of system parameters in here like assembly code, keynote, model, manufacturer, type comments, URL description, and type mark as, as well as cost. And if I hit OK, I'm going to go select this window. And again, there are those parameters, phase demolished, phase created, mark comments and under type properties assembly code keynote model manufacturer type comments URL description type mark and cost hey let's just pick the door if I look at that phase created phase demolished mark comments and again under type properties under identity data assembly code keynote model manufacturer I think you're getting the idea but just for the sake of argument let's just pick this wall here and if we scroll down the list of properties, there's phase demolished, created, mark, and comments. And when you know it, if you go into the type properties, under identity data, keynote, model, manufacturer, type comments, URL, description, assembly code, type mark, and cost. Some elements will have more system parameters and others will have less. But let's just take a look at the other characteristic of system parameters, such as scheduling. I'm going to go and right click on schedules and quantities here and build a new schedule of furniture. So I'm going to go down the furniture category and select it and hit OK and I'm in the wizard for creating my schedule for furniture. And when you note know under the available fields are all those system parameters we were just talking about. So let's start off by grabbing the type mark, the family and type, and the manufacturer as well as the model number and the count. And you'll see that some system parameters do show up and some don't. Those phasing parameters are part of a process in Revit or feature that allows us to control when and where we see certain elements based on their phase. So not necessarily a, a need to show that inside of your schedule um, because your schedule itself can show the phase of the objects inside of it. However, count is a unique system parameter found in schedules. So that's a view system parameter uh, that allows me to quantify the number of a certain type of piece of furniture inside my model. So I'm going to go to sorting and grouping and I'm going to sort by type mark and then by family and type. I'm not going to itemize every instance because I want to get a quantity or a line item. And as you can see it starts to pull out the data as expected. So if I pull these apart a little bit here I'm going to go down and find my executive chair here, and I'm going to give this a type mark of F-1. And I'm going to say that Herman Miller by, uh, makes these. And it's their HM11A model. So you'll notice that as I'm working on these elements, they're actually selecting in the model to show you all the 29 instances of that chair that are available in the project file. Now, we talked about the last characteristic, tagging. So system parameters should tag, right? So if we select the tag by category tool and come in here and tag our chair, I should see F1 in the tag as expected because the tag has the type mark parameter inside of it. So I'm just going to tag the other two chairs in the room. And if I hit modify here to cancel the command, I'm going to go look at the family of the tag in more detail. So I'll edit the family open it up in the family editor and select the label within the family. Now labels are allowing us to pull a particular parameter from the family of tags. You'll notice that if I go to category and parameters up here it'll tell me it's a furniture tag. So it knows to work with furniture and it knows to pull a list of system parameters inside the furniture. 
So if I hit edit label here, when I select that label, I'll see that it's pulling the system parameter type mark. But I can also pull other parameters like the manufacturer and the model. So if I go and tweak the family of the tag here a little bit and modify its formatting, I should be able to get a nice little upgrade to my tag when I pull it back into my project. And when you know it, those system parameters that I added values to in the schedule are tagging now because system parameters can be scheduled. So there you have it, the system parameter. Now let's talk about the project parameter. A project parameter has a couple of characteristics you should know about as well. A project parameter can only be created in the project that you are working on. The project parameter can be deleted from that project. The project parameter can be scheduled. However, project parameters cannot be created in families. They cannot be tagged. So there are your two limitations. There's one other neat feature about project parameters. They can be transferred between projects. So if you want to take your project parameter in, in project A and transfer it to project B, you can do so via the transfer project standards utility found on the manage tab. So let's take a look at project parameters. I'm going to select my room here. And there just happens to be inside the default template one project parameter called occupant. The rest of these parameters that you find here are system parameters. The only one that's not is the occupant. How do I know? Well, if I go up to the manage tab, come to the settings panel and select project parameters, I'll see the parameter called occupant. And if I modify that parameter, I'll see that it's a parameter type called project parameter. It's instance based and it's assigned to rooms. So let's go and add a value to our room here for the occupant. Let's say that this is Tom Jones's office. But I also want to add in Tom Jones's phone extension. Again, this is a building information model, so I should be able to add information. There are two ways to add project parameters inside of Revit. The first is through the Manage tab by selecting Project Parameters and selecting Add. But this will uh, make you go through a couple more hoops than necessary. The other way is via Schedule. So let's go ahead and make a room schedule. I'm going to go to the Rooms category here. I'm going to pull the System Parameters number and name and then my Project Parameter that's already in here, Occupant but I want to add one called phone extension and to add a project parameter via the schedule wizard I can select add parameter here on the fields tab and you'll notice it defaults to project parameter so let's call this parameter phone extension it's going to be an integer and I'm going to put it under identity data automatically picks an instance parameter for me and it's assigned to rooms so I've saved myself two steps in, uh, when I go to the manage tab process so if I hit OK and OK, you'll see that pops up a schedule. And next to Tom Jones, I'm going to put in 320. So that's Tom Jones's extension. And if I switch back over to the model view, I'll see that in the properties of the room, his phone extension appears, 320. So we know it can be scheduled. Now I said that they cannot be tagged. And to verify that this is true, I'm going to pick the room tag in the model view and edit the family. And if I select any one of these labels in here, it doesn't really matter which one I pick because they're all labels, and edit the label, you'll notice that phone extension does not appear here. We'll come back to that one in a minute. So let's cancel and close up the family of the room tag. So that's project parameters. Let's talk about family parameters now. I'm going to select my friend here, the door, and I'm going to go edit the family. Now the reason why I'm editing the family is because family parameters can only be created in the family editor. If we go to the button here called family types, this will show me the parameters that are currently in the family itself. Now these fa uh, parameters can be system parameters and family parameters. Very difficult to tell without picking on them and seeing if they modify. 
So if you see that when you pick on the parameter and the modify button is disabled, you know it's a system parameter. If the modify button is available, it is a family parameter or a shared parameter. So here I see when I pick on trim width, the modify button becomes available. And if I click modify, I see that it's a family parameter. And family parameters cannot appear in schedules or tags. So they are very limited in what they can do. So let's take a look at where and when you would use a family parameter. Very good question that everybody asks. Why would I ever use a family parameter? Well, family parameter can take part in a calculation for you. So you don't need to schedule it, but it might actually drive another parameter that does schedule. Another one could be that you just don't want it to show up in schedules or tags. For instance, who authored the family type? So let's go add a family parameter to this family. I'm going to call it type author. And it's just going to be text under other. And I'm going to leave a type base because I want each person that makes a new type in the family to put their name as the author. So I'll select OK. And let's just say that I happen to author the 36 by 84 door. So I'm going to put my name in there. I hit OK. And I'm going to load that back into the project. And I'm going to overwrite the existing version and its parameter values. So the family is loaded into the project. And if I select that door right there on the office and edit the type, I should be the author. And as you can see, there I am. Now, I cannot t uh, schedule this, right? So if I create a door schedule, I should not see my new family parameter in here called type author. And as expected, it's not going to show up. If I go and select the door tag in the model view here and edit the family, and I select the label inside the family and edit that label, I should not see the family author family parameter in here. So there you have it. Very limited. It's a very obscure little parameter type. Now the last parameter is the shared parameter. So the shared parameter can actually be scheduled and tagged. It can be shared among multiple projects as well as multiple families. And last but not least, it can be exported to ODBC. What does that mean? You can link tables to the parameters in your projects from things like Microsoft Access or Excel. So let's take a look at this guy in more detail. I said we come back to the room and we talked about the phone extension and how it's a project parameter and it can only be scheduled. Um, but let's say that we want to be able to tag um, the data jack port or something like that inside the room for IT. So I'm going to make a shared parameter. So I'm going to head up here to the Manage tab, and you'll see that there's a Shared Parameters button. The Shared Parameters button is actually available in both projects and the family editor. So if I select Shared Parameters, it's going to want me to create one. So I'm going to go and create one here for my project, and you most likely want to do this for your company. You want to make one Shared Parameter file for your company. Um, maybe limit the rights to who can write to it. But uh, I'm going to call mine synergist.txt. It's just a text file. And I'm going to create a new group. And I'm going to call this IT Management. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to make my new parameter. So I'm going to select New here. And you'll notice that there's nothing really fancy about a share parameter other than name, discipline, and type of parameter. So I'm going to call this Data Jack Number. And then I'm going to come in here and select common. It's just going to be an integer. And I'm going to select OK. So it just populates this text file now with the group called IT Management and Data Jack Number. So you can organize your groups of parameters by just selecting new here, giving the group a name, and then building parameters within that group. You can also move the shared parameters between groups if you feel that you put it in the wrong group to begin with. The only downfall to editing the shared parameter file is that you cannot modify a parameter once it's been made. So notice here that when I select data jack number, 
there's no modify button here or edit button of any kind. I can look at its properties, but they're all grayed out. I can't change them. So unfortunately, I'd have to delete this parameter and build it from ground up again if I screwed it up. So let's hit OK. And then let's come back into the project. So now I'm going to go to the project parameters and add one. You're probably wondering, why is he going to project parameters? Because inside the parameter properties of the project parameter, I can actually share that new shared parameter I just built called data jack number to the project. Because as you can see here, it says can be shared by multiple projects and families. So I'm going to go select my shared parameter, data jack number, hit OK. I'm going to put it under identity data and assign it to rooms. And if I hit OK and I go back and pick my room here, Office 104, there's my data jack number. And I'm going to put in there 122F. Oh, I can't put a, a letter in there. Sorry, it's an integer. 122. Now I want to tag that value. So we can go to the family of the tag here and edit the family. And I'm going to go pick a label. And I'm going to go and copy and paste it into place. And I'm going to edit that label of that copy I just made. And I don't see my shared parameter in the tag family, but if I go down here to the Add Parameter button, you'll notice that the only kind of parameter I can add to a tag is the shared parameter. And I'm going to go select Data Jack Number and select OK. It'll populate the information in the parameter data. And then I'm going to add it to the right, like so. And I'm just going to work some tag magic here. I'm going to make a visible parameter that can allow me to see the Data Jack. So this will be a family parameter called show data jack number. And I'm going to group it under graphics and make it type based. So I'm going to load that back into my project, overwriting the existing version and its parameter values. And then I'm going to go pick my tag here and take a look at the type properties. So I can see that it already has three types in it, room tag, room tag with area, and then room tag with volume. Let's add a new one. I'm going to duplicate this one, and I'm going to say room tag with data jack number. And I'm going to uncheck show volume, and I'm going to check show data jack. And when I hit OK, you'll notice that it's actually reporting my 122 data jack number for that room. So there you've seen I've shared the share parameter to a project and a family. It's scheduled, it's tagged, and it's a very, very powerful parameter.